I want Ray to live. I want Ray to pay his bill. What's the business, y'all? This is me, your boy, Scott by Nature TV, and this is another review of The Real Housewives of Potomac. I think this is episode five, okay? And I will say that this particular episode was so much better than last week's episode, because y'all know I was damn near asleep when I was filming that damn video, okay? So this shit is much better than last week's episode, and I must say that my opinions on certain people are beginning to change just a little bit, okay? Y'all know who I was indifferent to, who I didn't like who I like. It's really beginning to spin just a little bit, okay? And um, you'll see as we get into this video. However, before I get into it, if you want to see more Real Housewives of Potomac reviews besides my own, you can go to Giving You the Real Tea. You can go to Bondi Blue. You can go to Jamie That's Me. You can go to the Brooke Ashley, Erica Dinero TV, Rodney the Voice, uh, Niecy Dixon, Simply Sakina, Really B TV. Um, Yacrates, The Forest Rocks, Spilly Boy TV, and so many, 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 many others, okay? So that's my shout out for all other YouTubers for today, all right? So let's get into this review. I have a whole lot of energy because this episode was full of it, okay? So let's get into this shit. So as we already know, Ashley went into labor just last week and now she's bringing a baby home, okay? And you know, it was cute fluff for the beginning of the damn episode because you know at this point Ashley is pretty irrelevant to this show because she ain't being messy but then again she being messy next week but we ain't talking about next week we talking about right now but she done brought the baby home and you know all is well all is good with her and her you know predator ass husband you know who is still around yeah 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 yeah, yeah. him yeah so let's get into the next scene child so Mia and her husband G they go out to the park for a little picnic in the sun while it's cold as hell outside because I know that that scene was filmed in either February or March and this is way up there in Maryland so I know they were fucking cold, okay? You would not catch me dead having a picnic in the month of February or March down here in Mississippi because it be cold as shit in February and March, okay? Especially February, okay? You wouldn't catch me. You wouldn't catch me. You wouldn't catch me. Now, Mia brought up to her oldest son that G said that she works too much and she asked her son, did he agree? And he agreed with his stepdaddy. Girl, you work too much. Girl, you got too much going on. Girl, we need you. Girl, we need you to take me to practice. Girl, we need you to look over my homework. Like, girl, you got too much going on, Sis, that's what your son said. So after all of that, um, they send their kids to go off to play. And Mia and G were talking about Mia's relationship with her mom and how distant she is. Now, Mia revealed that her mother was on drugs and all of this other stuff. And she would disappear from time to time and all of this other stuff. So now that she's clean, she's been a little bit distant. So she doesn't know what the hesitation is. But I can say that when you really don't have a relationship with someone, especially a family member that uh, uh, that much, it, that distant distance is right there. It's always going to be there no matter what. No matter how hard you try, that distance is going to be there because it's like that with me and my grandmother. Like for many years, for like 30 some odd years of my life, I think when I was 20 nine that's when i went to new jersey for the first time and i tried to develop a, a relationship with her and we have one but it's really not the way that it is with my four other siblings and my first cousin it's just not the way that it is for them because they had her all their life i did not have her until i was 29 so you know it, it is like i did not really have her until i was like 29 years old so that's really where it at and that's why it's so hard to build a relationship because you can't miss what you never had and it's been so long and there's we don't have nothing in common so that's what it is but sometimes you just have to respect the distance and just respect your relationship for where it at long as this is not tumultuous then i feel like it's good but you know, you can't force something where it don't fit you. So Candace and Chris, they're talking about this up and coming trip that Candace has planned for the girls to go on, okay? Now she wants to go on a trip. She has a lot going on and Chris told her that, you know, with that being said, you can go on this trip, relax for a couple of days, but when you get back, you got to do two music videos. And Candace said, you know, it's good to have my husband, but at the same time, he's my husband and my manager, so he's taking on two different roles, and it can be hard, and I know it is, because that shit can be fucking annoying, okay? So then, um, 
Chris asked Candace, has she talked to Ashley? And he said no. He asked her, did she um, invite her on the trip? She said no, because she just had a baby. She probably can't go. And then Chris was like, well, could you at least call her and say hi? And Candace was like, aren't you nice? Stop trying to push Ashley on that damn girl. You know Candace don't like Ashley, and Ashley don't like Candace. I just don't know why these women on these shows just can't keep it 100 about the way that they really feel about a person. Like, if you don't rock with a motherfucker, you don't rock with them. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. That don't mean you gotta be mean to them. That don't mean that you gotta, uh, you know, hate their guts. But if you don't rock with a motherfucker, you just don't. Like, y'all know the motherfuckers I don't rock with. So it is what it is, child. So Giselle comes over to see Ashley. And then they start talking about motherhood and all this boring conversation. And then the baby, you know, took a dump on Ashley's hands. And, you know, the nanny came to get the baby to change the diaper or whatever. So then Giselle tells Ashley that Candace uh, planned a trip for them. And come to find out, Ashley didn't know nothing about the trip because Candace didn't tell her nothing about the trip. But Giselle said, look, I'm inviting you on the trip. You don't have to stay the whole time. You can come just one day. We know you just had the baby, you know. And then, you know, Ashley was like, so when is the trip? And then she was like, oh, next week. And Candace was like, oh, okay. I mean, Ashley was like, oh. I'm like... Candace and Ashley do not like each other. They do not mesh, honey. Then they started talking about Mia. And Giselle said that her and Robin decided that, you know, the three of them decided that they're just going to meet up for those drinks like they wanted to before and just try to clear the air and try to get to know each other better. And then Giselle mentioned that there's a cheating rumor out there about Wendy's husband. Now, as you guys already know, that earlier this year, All About the Tea revealed that there was some cheating tea, cheating allegations about Wendy Osefo's husband. Husband, Eddie is self -O. You know that I reported about it here on um, Scotted by Nature TV. Now, we don't know how, you know, true this shit is. We just know that it came up out of the blue. It was on Reality T and All About the T, okay? It was on both of those websites, okay? And Giselle is telling Ashley about it, and she feels like that's the reason why Wendy is getting her titties done, her ass done, and doing all this extra shit because she's scared that she's going to lose her fucking husband. That is, those are Giselle's words? Nah, my. So, Wendy and Eddie have a really serious conversation about fulfillment um basically it's like these people was like well you know i'm, I'm a public um commentator i'm a political commentator i'm a i'm a professor but I, i'm this i'm that and all this other stuff and now i'm into the candles but people just don't understand it and eddie said that you're putting too much on your plate sometimes we do put too many things on our plate sometimes and i am one person that can overwork myself overcompensate myself you know what i mean because even with me doing YouTube, I have a job that I work 40 hours a week for. Eight, eight, nine hours a day, 40 hours a week. And I come home and I do this for, like, say for instance, on a regular day, like, like a Thursday. Let's say that. I work early on Thursdays. Get up in the morning at 4 a.m., have to be at work at 5. Get off of work at 2. Have to come home. Uh, do a couple of, maybe do about three, four videos. All of them are probably yes for the mess. Three, four yes for the mess videos, you know what I mean? And then, um, that's like three to like six or seven o'clock that night because I got to film and edit and post them. So, that's tiring. Like, people really don't realize how much, how much work I do. Like, I'm, I'm working hard to do my job that pays the majority of my bills but I'm also working hard to entertain my supporters and the people that like me and watch my shit and support me and working hard for my extra set of income because that does help me with not only my bills but it also is money that I use to buy my plane tickets and buy my clothes and shit like that so you know it I can uh, you know sometimes you can put a lot and I'm very restless because I do I work hard at my first job and doing this I work very hard at that so sometimes you can do a lot and Eddie said he's not fulfilled I don't think Wendy is fulfilled too because at the end of the day Wendy has done a lot of things in her life which are great things even though we was annoyed as fuck by her time about her four degrees four degrees are great I don't have a damn degree. All I got is a high school diploma. My mama has two degrees. My sister has one degree. So, degrees are great to have. I Sometimes I wish I went back to school and got my journalism degree. That's all I feel. But, and that's the regret that I feel. But, 
I feel like a lot of the things that Wendy has done was not because she wanted to do them. I feel like she did it because her family wanted her to do it. And I feel like that's why she's not necessarily fulfilled. She wants It's a lot of things that she wants to do, but she doesn't want to be a disappointment to anybody, if that makes sense. That's how I feel, and I think that's what where her defense mechanism comes from. You know what I mean? So... I, I just think that although Wendy is in a happy place as far as her family life, I think that her real, real life, like her career, I don't think she's fulfilled in that because a lot of the things that she's done, it was for her family and to make them proud, not necessarily herself. And sometimes we got to get out of that mindset that we got to make everybody else proud but not make ourselves proud. We got to be miserable and shit like that just to appease them. Yeah, that's what we fuck up at, you know, so it is what it is. So Giselle, Robin, and Mia, they meet up for drinks. And they all decide that we're going to make up, you know, we're going to do, we're going to get fresh. We're going to start, have a fresh start. We're going to start over on a clean slate. So Mia reveals her past as a foster kid. Um, she was saying that, you know, her mom was on drugs. She ran off. Um, her dad was physically abusive. Um, like, uh, he was beating on her mom. And then when she tried to break up, he threw her into a TV. And then she came back to school with marks on her arm and her friend saw her blood gushing through her shirt. And then they took her away and took her into foster care. And as a child, you just want to go home. But, you know, you don't want to be in a group home with, a diff with, you know, with different people. You know what I'm saying? And um, her dad, you know, passed away um, a long time ago. And then, you know, uh, she was like, well, where's your dad on drugs? Robin was like, where's your dad on drugs? Because Juan's parents died of AIDS because of heroin usage. And then Mia said that her father also died of AIDS from heroin usage. And I will say that that was, as tragic as it was, that was a cute moment between Robin and Mia because they have a lot more in common than they think. It's very crazy when you hear about stuff and you see that they have a lot in common than they than they thought they did. And I, I thought that was a super eye-opening moment for both Robin and Mia because they started off on the wrong foot, but they have a lot more in common than they think. Um, then they start talking about the trip and how it's going to be a good time. So, you know, when he gets ready to leave, she leaves the children with Eddie. Candace is on the bus and she welcomes Giselle on the bus. When Giselle gets on the bus, she gets an icy welcome from Giselle and Robin, but everybody else is happy to see the Grand Dame. And as the bus is going, Giselle reveals that she invited Ashley. And she asked Karen, Candace, was that okay? And Candace was like, it was fine. And um, Candace was like, um, Ashley just, shouldn't her cooch here? She just had a child. Candace, girl, just say you don't want Ashley on this fucking trip. You don't give a fuck about her damn cooch being, uh, I don't know what the right word is. I don't think you care about her sore cooch after having her baby. You just don't want her on the trip because you don't fuck with her. Just say that. Y'all got just y'all just gotta be honest about how y'all feel about these folks. Just say y'all don't like them and keep moving. That's all I'm saying. And they start pole dancing and wouldn't know nothing about shit on their damn pole, especially not Karen. So then when it come down to the rooms, um, Candace revealed that herself, Robin, Mia, and Giselle got the main house, and a scholar, Wendy, and Karen has the cottage. And Giselle talking about, oh, you with the cool people. You with the cool people. Girl, ain't nothing cool about you but your damn taste in fashion and everything else. Girl, shut up. Giselle and Robert reveals to the people on the bus that the slate is clean with Mia. And then after that, as you know, last year they was talking about, you know, um, I think that was the homecoming for uh, Surrey. And uh, because of the COVID restrictions, everybody can't go. So Karen decides to invite Mia and Wendy this time and everybody's happy well you know um, Wendy is you know happy about it but Giselle is in the confession we're talking about just last year just last year Giselle could I mean Karen could not stand Wendy and now she's inviting her out and blah 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 Giselle shut the fuck up cuz you didn't like Ashley for a couple of years and now y'all bosom buddies now so just shut the fuck up everybody has a chance to move the fuck on the girls pick their rooms and as Giselle and Karen are about to fix their place Giselle feels like um, her and Karen have had their issues in the past, but now it has gone too far. Your issues has gone went too far when you made that shirt mimicking Karen about her tax issues. That's when it went too far. But see, that's my thing, Giselle. You can't take what you dish out. You have you have set up here and talked about every damn body, but can't nobody talk about you, girl? Please. But then was it Giselle or Robin? One of them kicked me out of her room, and I'm like, yeah, they go with the bullshit. 
already. So then Giselle says, does anybody want to apologize before we start on this trip? Because I want this trip to be fun. A scholar says, does, is their apology warranted? And then Karen was like, are you talking to me? And then that, it, that's where it go from there. Giselle demands an apology from Karen because she feels like Karen told a lot of lies on her. Like, uh, Giselle, what about the shit you're doing now? See, it's really funny that you want an apology from Karen about some shit that she said at the fucking reunion about Jamal, which were all facts. Okay? You know it was. And then, you sitting up here talking to Ashley about some cheating shit that you don't even fucking know is true or not. You, instead of telling Wendy, you telling Ashley. You know what I'm saying? So, you always speak on everybody's relationship. You always speak on everybody's family life. You always do that, bitch. Okay? You always do that, and you can't take it when it's happening to you. Don't nobody owe you shit. If anything, you owe everybody on this show a fucking apology. Everybody. You owe Katie apology. You owe Sharice a damn apology. You owe Monique a damn apology. You owe Candace a damn apology. You owe Karen. You owe everybody a damn apology but Robin. Everybody a fucking apology. So you gonna have you a fucking seat. Now at the end of the day, the shit that Karen is mad at you about it's really bullshit because you did not wish death on that man, period. You did not. So, Karen need to find a better thing to, to cling on to. Because that was some fucking bullshit. So, she can miss me with that. So, yeah, I'm with you all the way on that. But you just need to shut the fuck up. I, 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 no. I, I just feel like you just do. Just shut up and just move the fuck on. Because you full of it. Like, shut up. Like, Giselle and Karen are both full of shit, though. It's just that I like. Karen more than Giselle. I just think that Giselle is messy, petty, and vicious. And um just uh what other word? She's she's petty, messy, vicious, and she does things out of spite. And she does things to be um it's the damn that word was at the tip of my tongue. I just can't say it. But she's all of that and then some. Karen is just a damn liar and a perpetrator, and all she does is try to make shit look more than what it is, and it just ain't. I wish that Karen would stop fucking lying. I wish she would stop fucking grandstanding and just be real. And I wish that Giselle would stay out of other folks' fucking business and just own up to her own shit and start, you know, dealing with the karma that she gets. Because their reunion is karma and her ass still ain't recovered from it. And that's why she's mad. With that being said, you guys, it's Be Your Boy Scotty by Nature. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, share it. Do whatever you see fit. And if you want to follow me on social media, my Twitter and my IG will be in the description box, okay? Now, my Love and Marriage Huntsville video will be on the way, okay? I still haven't watched it yet, but I had to go ahead and get Potomac out because it's on right now. So, I had to go ahead and get that out for you guys tonight. So, I'm about to go on watch Love and Marriage Huntsville. That will be my next video. And then after that will be basically Yes for the Messes. And also, tune in tomorrow night at 9.30 p.m., 8.30 Central Time for the Whether You Like It or Not. Housewives panel, which stars myself, giving you the real tea, Josiah's World TV, Yap Crates, Really B TV, Simply Sakina, and also expect guest appearances throughout the season from Reggie, um, the Brooke Ashley, Chocolate Beauty 81, and the uh and Alexander Rogers. Alright? With that being said, you, you guys, your boy is out of here. Peace out. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch.